we will discuss about uh, the Porter view on uh, theory building. Uh, this is quite uh, important as a topic for people interested in management because all the theory models, frameworks, and uh, best practices created in the last uh, 40 years are coming from this idea of uh, creating a new theory in, in management that was set by by Porter at the beginning of his uh, research, being him the father of, of strategic uh, studies. So um, to understand the origin of this, we have to go to the origin of uh, the Porter studies. And um, in an interview at the Academy of Management in 2002, uh, Professor Porter answered a number of questions in a freely way, giving us a very lively view of uh, his vision about uh, theory building. And the first point is uh, the crossing the river moment. So Porter was a, a PhD in economics at Harvard University, which is uh, on the other side of the Charles River. If you have uh, on the right side, it is the business school one. And it crosses the river entering the Harvard Business School for a course in industrial organization that was in that moment the course in which strategy was studied and discussed at Harvard. And uh, he suddenly understand one key point that informing all his activities and uh, other uh, academics activities from that moment on, that is that on the business school side of the river, Chetter is part of assumption don't work. Managers must consider everything. So you cannot just saying something is not uh, on my interest because when you take decision in the real world, everything matters. So he invented the frameworks. Frameworks is something that is different from case study approach. So single case, deep discussion about one event or decision or and different from modeling uh, large scale statistical testing so having huge amount of uh, mathematical modeling uh, in the in the words of porter frameworks tries to capture the full richness of a phenomenon with the most limited number of dimension so first point is uh, framework is something that is uh, logic and structure it is a way in which we inform decision trying to put together the smallest number of elements that must take into consideration when a manager decides. Therefore, this implies that modeling uh, usually is theoretical, framework is practical, but uh, instead of it being a business study approach that is something in which you look for a case and then through analogies, you try to apply that case to other cases, framework is already synthesized the theory. So manager can apply a framework to take decision uh, without taking into consideration a specific case of analogy. Uh, during the interview, there was a couple of interesting points that, that uh, are following up the idea of framework. The first one is, uh, a question about uh, the Peter's book uh, in search of excellence that was probably one of the most important and known book in the 80s and here the point of Porter is very it's very interesting because he said yes the greatest contribution was let's try to be very excellent so search for that excellence but the book has no framework it's just a list of uh, good things to do and that's again uh, a way in which we summarize from a case study in the wrong way because there is no analogy, there is no theory behind, there is no frameworks. It just, if you want to be excellent, look at that company that did uh, this and that. And, and this is not a way of creating uh, structure knowledge, but is a way of uh, just uh, listing good things to do in, in the Porter's world. Another interesting point is uh, what about uh, the emerging strategies? So the fact that uh, you cannot plan uh, 
everything. Usually there is no way of uh, exactly executing what you have taught and so on. So here the point is, uh, in the Porter's view, is that some economic fundamentals always uh, true. And uh, as you see in the, in the figure here, there is the intended strategy that then they become deliberate. I want to do this. But before realizing that strategy, there is the emergent strategy. There's the idea coming from Minsberg studies. And, uh, and here the point is uh, that uh, Porter is basically giving right of existence of emergent strategy, especially at the beginning of the histories of a successful company, in which there was a group of people who who has the idea of following up a strategy, taking a number of core decisions about something. And that's what deliberate, uh, in the sense that was decided by a group of people, but was incredibly emergent in the sense that it was not planned, it was not in terms of positioning, it's not in terms of doing something because I intend after an analysis to follow that strategy. So, um, especially at the beginning, the emergent strategy is the most important way of uh, creating the, uh, the, the strategy. Uh, but at the end of the story, what uh, um, Porter is saying is that uh, in the real world, you go back to activities and skills. And so when you position your company to have a competitive advantage, uh, is, is positioning in terms of I, I have a, an idea of how to position but at the end of the story what you really do is developing skills and produce activities and through those activities you position the company therefore even if an emergent even if is an emergent strategy the emergent strategy is then taking the company to a position so positioning against the competition um, and, and here the point is that the skills that probably are key in the, in the emerging startup moment are not valuable per se. They are important because they position you in a market being able to do something. So um, here there is the link between skills and resources and, and the way in which you valorize, give value to these uh, skills and resources is attaching these resources and then to activities and then to competitive advantage uh, pieces of competition. And, and the example of Porter is the well-known example of Xerox Park, which, is a, which was a very big um, R&D center, which developed a number of new products, ideas, and uh, prototypes. For example, the mouse, or the windows of your computer, but then they never enter uh, this uh, uh, resource, they never entered in, uh, in the skill that was applied in the real world. So the point of the resource-based view, that is another huge uh, stream of research uh, uh, from the 70s, the 80s on in, in strategy, at the end uh, can be boiled uh, down to link these resources to the value chain and so to the activities of the company. So Porter is saying, in synthesis, resource-based view is important, but at the end of the story, you can link this resource-based view theory within the value chain and the competitive advantage uh, theory. Last uh, important point about uh, this interview is uh, if, which is the final aim of a company. And here Porter is incredibly strong saying uh, profitability and not sure all the value. Why? Because everything is uh, analyzed in terms of revenue minus cost being uh, uh, operational cost, so cost that you have every year, or capital expenditures or investments. But at the end, uh, cost and uh, um, revenues are the important uh, focus on setting a strategy and he says something that is particularly insightful saying uh, if having changed the objective of the company from profitability to shareholders value 
um, destroy many companies and uh, give credence to a number of managers ideas that are not rules because if you if you cannot measure the effect of a management idea on profit on real activities of the company but just a kicking uh, on 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 the shareholder uh, value and 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 and, uh, and share price uh, that's something that you cannot test in terms of uh, a coherence so um, we have uh, from this interview of the company of management uh, uh, a couple of points that must be <clears throat> analyzed in terms of uh, theory building the first one is uh, should we use mathematical models uh, or not and here the point of portrait is very strong and round, grounded in common sense and experience Mathematical models are situation specific. They solve uh, specific problem, but usually with limited complexity because to, to, to manage a huge amount of variables, you must go in depth on a very, very small piece of theory. Um, so usually you have to act with Ceteris Paribus approach, so leaving uh, some important variable of interest outside. Um, so the point here is that basically what you come up with in terms of theory is very sensitive from the assumption you did at the beginning. And, and this is not good for practitioners application of this, uh, of this model. So the best solution for this model is to be integrated in a framework and uh, giving insight in specific points of uh, the framework and so being a source for getting a better framework in particular point of this of this framework and so coming back to the framework that let's say if you want an example is the five forces model it's a, it's a framework um, the idea of the framework is uh, going beyond the beginning of the management theory building that basically was uh, putting uh, together broad principle coming from uh, case studies so you put experience and analogy together and you give broad principle if you want uh, to have a broad principle kind of framework is the SWOT analysis uh, so it's, it's it's quite simple no link to variables it's just a list of things that you should consider it's valuable it's useful but at the end it's not uh, structured the framework is a bit something a bit more complex uh, because taking into consideration all the variables needed to take decision and uh, these variables are linked together through the framework so take the five forces model as an example if the power of uh, the buyers increase the profitability of the industry decrease and this is exactly the kind of link that uh, porter things make frameworks uh, logical, structured, and uh, at the end of the story, useful for, for managers. So the point of frameworks is taking into consideration all the variables that you need to take a decision. So if you want to understand if an industry is attractive, the five forces take into consideration all the variables you can consider to understand if that company is, if that industry, sorry, is attractive. And here there is a one additional point that is very specific in terms of theory building but quite important frameworks do not have point of uh, equilibrium so you will not reach uh, as in the good economics uh, models uh, statistical mathematical models the equilibrium or in the neoclassical economics uh, uh, demand and supply model you reach or you're looking through a point of equilibrium that usually is a point that you find solving uh, complex mathematical uh, functions in this case uh, the framework are just giving uh, a number of interaction 
that is continually evolving. So you, you will not have a framework that is giving you the equilibrium. It's just a number of variables you can consider to take. You can measure to take uh, important decision. And uh, in this article of the 90, on, of 91, Porter is trying to synthesize uh, models and frameworks. And basically what he's saying is that they are not mutually exclusive. So you can have models, but models must be used to support and to refine and to sophisticate part of the frameworks. So models take into consideration few variables, maybe one variable, and that one variable maybe is included in the framework. So that framework will take into consideration the consequence, the theory, the insights from the model on that specific variable. And uh, uh, so if you have good tension between the two, you can use models to analyze in depth a single variable that then are uh, transferred in the frameworks. On the other side, frameworks maybe need some additional analysis, punctual, low, uh, small analysis in a small part of the framework, and that's the role of the model. So in this sense, probably there is uh, an option to have both uh, structure to work together, but at the end, if you if you read the the Porter's uh, view uh, and and his uh, view is it's focused on on uh, on, uh, on frameworks and uh, and also because that's what he did for for Robert's academic career analyzing and creating uh, frameworks.